Okay, we're here, we're ready to go, and I and I know from all the comments out there are already that you're you're so ready for this conversation. So I want to welcome all of you that are listening, that are watching, that will be commenting, that are going to watch this on the replay. Thank you for being here and being part of this growing, big conversation about listening. And we have been dissecting listening on so many different levels that it has been just amazing. And I want to introduce you all to who we have here today before we begin our conversation. So we have Heidi. Hello. You can, Hello. Everybody can, hi, Heidi. Heidi's, hi. Heidi's a pro. She just got done with a hangout, and she's here quick. Darlene is here, and Darlene is a friend of mine from North Carolina, and I love her dearly, and she's Hello. joining us today. Hi, Darlene. Hi. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. And Gail. Hi, Gail. Hi. One of our regulars. And Jamie, one of our new regulars. Hi, Jamie. Hi there. Nice to be here again. Yeah, and Jamie's going to be on my show on Monday on Breaking Free, so I can't wait for that on uh, an internet uh, TV channel. And that's going to be fun. Yeah, that's going to be real fun. <laughs> and then Jeremy is here. Hey, Jeremy, welcome. This is Jeremy's first time, too. Hi. Thanks, Marilyn. Good to be here. Good to have you here. Jeremy is, is magnificent, and uh, wait till you hear him. And, of course, our... Katrina, who's been here since day one. Hey. Hello. Hey. And then Marguerite, who came up with this idea last week, so thank you for that, because it was one of those ideas, you know, we, we've talked about listening on many levels, and she came and said, well, what about being heard? And I, we all went, uh, duh. So, Marguerite, <laughs> hey. Hi. Hey. I was heard. I you was heard. heard. Thank you so much. You were heard. Yes, you are. You're welcome. And uh, Robin Thomas is a friend of mine also. We met online, and then we realized, oh, we're both from North Carolina, too. So welcome. This is your first time. Yes, thank you. Nice to see everyone. Good to have you here. So being heard, wow, how amazing a conversation is this going to be? Because everybody, for the most part, wants to be heard, right? We all want to be noticed, heard, acknowledged, whatever that means. And how do you... How do you create that in a conversation? So I want to ask Marguerite, who came up with this last week, to begin this really great conversation, and everybody will add their uh, comments. And everybody on the comment stream, you're part of this. So add whatever you want. We're going to talk about it. We're going to pin you. We're going to share it. And we want you engaged in this conversation. So feel free. So Marguerite, you start. So being heard. If you talk to be heard, you cannot be heard. And if you don't start listening with your ears, with your third eye, third ear, whatever, and your heart, you can't even hear yourself. That's an insight that I had for myself that in order for me to feel heard, notice I'm saying feeling heard, uh, it doesn't mean that other people have heard what you said, but it's the feedback loop that makes us feel good when other people pay attention to us. And that's a little bit of self-obsession self sometimes for some people. They always want to talk and talk and talk and, and get the feedback and the energy from the audience, let's say. Uh, you know these talkers. I'm, I'm now mimicking that talker who wants to have attention. But to truly feeling heard, we have to shut off that blah, blah, blah talking and start listening. That's the first time you can actually feel being heard. Mm -hmm. Good points. I mean, you know, we... we we all have experienced, I'm sure, somebody who's been yelling, a parent yelling at a child or whatever. The child never hears what the parent's going to say. All they hear is the yelling. You don't hear the message. So that's a very a good point in being heard. And in order to be heard, you really have to listen, right, to, be, to share who you are. So that's, that's great. So now we're going to go to Robin. And what's your concept, Robin? 
had to unmute myself. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, my concept is is very similar. I think a lot of what we do is when we're talking with someone, we're busy formulating what we want to say next, and we're not actually listening to what they're saying. So one of the things I'm working with is um, being in the moment and really paying attention. And when when I really pay attention to someone else, they also they they model that back. And another thing is when, when we're going and having a conversation and questions, there are certain questions that lead more to being heard. Um, you know, avoiding yes, no answers, but really, really finding out when you find out what the other person is really searching for and looking for, um, that conversation becomes more attuned heart to heart, uh, as in, you know, asking how someone feels about something instead of just um, making statements and having yes or no questions. Mm -hmm. Right. Being in the moment is is very important to being heard because if you are not listening to what's going on in the moment, you're not going to say any anything that's worthwhile in being heard. Really. And that's, really, that's right. that's so true. And and so many of us are we're so busy and we're rushed. And we finish each other's sentences, and and you're right. It's just not taking that time and taking a breath and being in the moment. So it's very interesting as we go forward here to to consider the concept of being heard is not being heard. So really and truly, what is being heard? Just talking, screaming, you know, getting your point across. All of those things may not is not being heard. What really how do we really help somebody to hear us? You know, so Katrina, um, when you look at this, what do you see as a way of being heard? How do you share yourself so other people know who you are? I think there's two folds to that question for me. It's initially obviously taking that time to be clear on what it is that I want to share and then finding the best way to share it. Mm -hmm. So just because I'm a writer and I actually communicate better through email doesn't necessarily mean that the person that I'm trying to connect with is the same. So you have to be mindful of, okay, well just because I would like to communicate in this way but this other person actually is better in terms of listening maybe by the phone or they want to have a verbal conversation first. I think it's really important to look at those two things. And it's not to force yourself to communicate in a way that isn't natural for you, but maybe you, you put a little bit more forethought into it when it's, it's a very meaningful conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, I also agree with what everyone said on the panel so far. It's, it's listening to those cues, not necessarily just from the other person, but from yourself. Because as an empath, I've got to listen to my own stuff and then the other person's and then say, okay, where is the middle point here? Where can we kind of meet in the middle and, and really get clear about how to move forward. Mm -hmm. So I do think how you're communicating and what you choose to do has to be mindful as well. <clears throat> oh yeah, that's a good point. Good point. So Jeremy, what's your take? Well, I think uh, um, what Robin mentioned a little bit connected with me. The uh, um, I just think about how many times uh, we interrupt each other. And if, you, if you're interrupting each other um, and I do this myself. I, you, you know, you're you're living in the future. You're anticipating what they're going to say, um, and so I've I've had to try to um, move more to the present. Also, and you know, if I'm talking to someone, I, I try to ask open-ended questions. You know, d tell me your story. How was your day? And just let them talk. And uh, you know, I think you find by doing that, you you become more quiet. You, you find you are listening more. But if you're having to ask people, you know, what did you just say? I forgot. I, you know, I lost my train of thought. You know, they, then you're, you know, you're either thinking about something in the past or you're thinking about the future. You're not, um, you're not really connecting with the person. And I, I think uh, we connect cognitively with each other a lot, but I'm not sure how often we speak heart to heart. And that's, uh, I guess that's something I try to do. You know, it's interesting you, you would say some of those things because when we mirror, when we hold our tone a certain way, 
somebody will somebody will automatically eventually put their tone in the same space or energy as as we will so if you're talking loud some you know people tend to mirror that so that's very important to be cognizant of your tone how you are your presence your being in the moment and I just had to show I think this is a really good time for a joke so I just wanted to show you all a pillow which I don't know if I've ever showed you before but got, Jeremy you mentioned something about interrupting so I don't know I hope you can you see this yes you can see it okay so my pillow says it's irritating when you talk while I'm interrupting and I'll tell you what that stopped me from interrupting because I used to interrupt all the time because I was like oh my god everything I wanted to say I was afraid if I didn't say it in that moment it would blow up inside of me oh you have to hear this now oh right. my god you just don't talk you have to hear what I have to say well I found that pillow and boy let me tell you that's a reminder so you, you're right we want to um, be respectful and give somebody the platform to speak now that doesn't guarantee that they're gonna turn around and listen to us true so I want to know how do you get people or how do you help people listen to you it's one thing to listen now how do you use your listening and, to, and to help people listen to you how can we get heard how do we be heard whether you're standing up in front of a whole room of people speaking in front of the room or here Let, let's even use this as a platform how are you speaking or what do you want to get across so you can be heard Jamie Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, <clears throat> as this conversation's going on, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting more and more ideas. Um, so let's see if I can just quickly summarize the things that have been coming up for me. Um, I think one thing which is really important, similar to what Katrina was saying, is you have to be very clear about what it is you want to say in the first place. Um, you know, if you've got some kind of rather fuzzy cloudy idea in your head, you're not going to express it very well and, and other people aren't going to really catch on to it very well. So that, that is kind of like you, you have to mean what you say and say what you mean. So, you know, don't just talk for the sake of making noise or just for the mm -hmm. sake of kind of blurting out stuff, but be clear about what it is you want to say and say only what you really mean, what you're, what you're really clear about. Mm -hmm. and, and then it should come across with a bit more sort of power and energy in, in your voice and in your words that will that people will kind of like wake up and listen to what you're saying. Um, and the other thing I was going to say is um, <clears throat> uh, from my coaching experience, um, the, the, as, as Margarita was saying at the beginning, the, the importance of listening is paramount. So um, for example in coaching, when you're coaching a client, and I think there's, we've got a number of coaches here on the panel, so you, all, all you guys can probably relate to this, but when you're coaching a client, you can't just say to the client anything that you want that's your ideas about the situation. You have to listen to the client and say things which resonate with, with the client. So what you're saying has to, has to resonate, has to relate to the person you're talking to. Because I think a lot of people, it's a very common thing, and often we do it without realizing that when we're listening in a conversation, we actually have an agenda. You know, it's, it's maybe it's unconscious or subconscious, but we're only going to pick out the things which are relevant to us when somebody's talking to us. You know, even we do that unconsciously. I think. So if you want somebody to really take notice of what you're saying, what you say has to be relevant to the person. And in order for it to be relevant, you have to really listen to them first, to, to, to tune in to, to, to them and, and wh where they are in their, in, their, in their life, in their situation. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say um, is that it's also, I think it's really important um, to acknowledge what someone is saying. Because if, when in a conversation, somebody wants to express something to you, if you don't acknowledge it and you continue with your agenda, they will close off to what you're saying until they get their side of the message acknowledged. Once they have their side of the message acknowledged, they are then more open to receive further communication. So it's really important to acknowledge what somebody's saying to you in order to continue expressing what you want to say so they're actually tuning in and listening to it. Um, and then just quickly, the last thing I, I wanted to say is 
And again, this comes back very much to what I think everybody's been saying, really, that the, the importance of listening. And it, it comes to my mind, um, the sentence from that beautiful prayer from St. Francis, um, which is like, um, Divine Master, grant that I may seek to understand rather than to be understood. Because then when you put your emphasis on trying to understand people, then you see where they are and you relate to them. And then you can see how you can help them with your, your own words and your own input into the conversation. So those were the three, four, four things which were coming up for me. And, I, and it pretty much um, is in line with what everybody's saying, really. I mean, we've all been saying more or less the same thing in slightly different ways, I think. That was beautifully put, Jamie. Um, very, the, the resonating part is very important because you have about, I don't know, three, four, five seconds of somebody's attention. And that's no matter what you do. So if you you got to make the most of those three or four or five, six seconds. That's it. And in that, you either lose them or you don't. You captivate them or you don't. And the best way is a lot of what you're, I mean, what you're all saying is extraordinary. So uh, we're going to reiterate a lot of these things. So uh, I would just want to turn around first to Heidi. Is there anything on the on the comments that we want to acknowledge? Yes, there is uh, several things going on. It's quite a lot going on in wonderful artwork from uh, Candy and also Dave Moore. And I wanted to pin the, the this comment. We had talked about that, but I think it's nice. Phil is. Uh, repeating what we have said why he was not yet here. To listen to others, you need to listen to yourself first. Create some space between your own thoughts. Mm -hmm. Right. I think this is very nicely uh, put. And then there's some other comment from Dave Moore. One must remember that our client always has something else they could be doing, so stay relevant and focused. Exactly. And there are many, many people here. I don't see if if I can see them all. There is Joan, there is Phil, as I said already. There is Candy. There is, I saw, let me see if I can go to this page. Dorothy Sipken is here. And Sudesh Solanki. And I have to scroll down to find all of them. There was a whole lot of people. All right. Well, good. Well, let's hear from you all because everybody has has had different experiences. Yeah, you I'm know. quite sure. We have. And so we want to hear what is it that you do? What have you done that has been a winning formula for you to get somebody's attention? It could be the pause that we've talked about, certainly speaking or not speaking. Certainly, making sure that what you're saying is re is resonating with your audience. If you, I mean, are you talking to a 10-year-old kid or you're talking to a 20-year-old adult? I mean, who are you speaking to? You have to make sure your information is resonating with them. There are certain things. What have you tried that works? That's what we're doing here. We're gathering up all these beautiful comments and we're putting them out there, right? So that we all can practice this and grow. This, this world of listening. So it's, I want to hear from everybody that's out on the uh, comments more about what you've done. So Gail, what about you? I'm glad you picked me now because I wanted to go because <laughs> I don't want to forget <laughs> what, I, what I want to say because there's so many <laughs> things floating around. But I, I'd like to come at this from a, a different angle. Not from the angle of, um, like say, working with a client of wanting to, you know, wanting to gain somebody's attention, but from the position of maybe being more vulnerable, maybe not being clear that you know what you, maybe not being clear about what you even need to say or even what you want. You know, you're discussing something with your husband or a friend, and it's it's confusing, but yet you still have that need. You know, you need to be heard. So, you know, it's not about being clear necessarily, but what it is about is getting back to you need to be able to listen in order in order to be able to be heard. You need to be able to listen to your own needs. You need to be able to express those needs. You know, maybe it'll come down to saying to the person, hey, listen, I'm not really even sure 
how I feel right now, but I just need you to listen to me. I need you to just, you know, bear with me here for a minute as I, as I express my thoughts and they come clearer. So I think it's about um, being vulnerable and being open and that when you are vulnerable and open and know what you need, then you'll know how to get what you need, which is being listened. Like maybe you're talking to a person that just no matter what you do, no matter how vulnerable you are or no matter how directly you ask it, maybe that person is not in a place where they can actually listen to you because of their own stuff going on. So then when you tune into your own listening, you'll know that and you'll know that maybe you need to be listened to by somebody else or maybe you need to give that person some space and then they'll be able to listen to you later on or maybe you just <laughs> you just need to hear yourself and that's it in this moment but I, I think it really comes down to if you want to be heard you need to listen be able to listen in the ways that I just expressed and also the ways that everybody else had has been saying before yeah, that's great. And this idea of vulnerability is extremely important because when we share our, our authentic self, people are, are, are more apt to listen. You know, when you share your fear or your unknowingness, you know, you, when, you, when, you, when the playing field is neutral and there isn't an imbalance of power or any of those things, it really makes a difference in the other person feeling like they're part of this. So that's a very good point to remember. So thank you, Gail, for bringing all that up. Darlene. There we go. Can you hear me? I am yeah. muted myself. I've just so loved this conversation so far, and I resonate with all the different angles that we've been coming at with this question. And I love to look at the energy behind questions, and so that's what I was playing with before we got together. And so when I contemplate being heard, like I'm asking myself, what is it that I'm really wanting from being heard? Like there's, there's something that my beingness wants from being heard. And so there's different reasons I could want to be heard. I, I could be, like Gail said, um, in a space of just wanting someone to hold space for me and witness my process as I move through whatever is going on or possibly um, I am wanting to set clear boundaries and so you know what what is the energy behind that and so you know a, an example that came to me when I really felt I needed to be heard was with my partner a while back and I was not good at expressing myself and being heard I was afraid to state what it was that I needed and what I felt and um, so I felt like my boundaries had been crossed and um, I had this uh, this angst and this I was triggered by it because of an action that my husband had taken that um, I, it just set me off and so I had to look at well what is what is the energy behind that um, what you know I'm feeling disempowered with that and what's the solution what what is it that my soul is really yearning for me to express right now what, I'm meant to do the opposite of that, you know, and so from that space to be heard, I, I had to do my own internal process of looking at, you know, why I felt the way that I did by the action, I, working through it energetically first myself, coming to a space of neutral so that then I could stand in my power and express from that place without feeling triggered without feeling like I had to um, make him get it. And um, yeah, so I, I, I just felt called to bring that piece to um, the conversation. And so I, I, I guess for me, it's what's the intent the, uh, underneath wanting to be heard. Um, and from that place, getting an alignment internally first and then allowing myself to express. So, cool. yeah. Yeah, that's, I think 
that's also a wonderful point that you just brought up about the intention, because we we want so much we want so much to connect, and be part of things, and having patience or even asking permission. You know, we forget sometimes to ask permission to be heard, for somebody to listen to us. I had a similar an experience with my husband somewhere, and I assumed he was listening to me because we came into this restaurant together and I just assumed he wasn't distracted by something else, right? But, you know, I realized because of learning and listening that he was not, he wasn't on the same page as I was in that moment. So I could have gotten mad. Why are you not listening to me? Well, I didn't ask him to. So I backed up and said, okay, when you're done with what you're doing, will you listen to me? And he said, yes. Give me a minute. That's all I had to do is give him a minute. And then I got hurt. I was not only heard in what I wanted to say that I couldn't hold back, but I was heard in the way that I wanted to be heard. So it makes a it makes a huge difference. This is why we do the show. So that these ideas can transform themselves into how we live every day. So thank you, can darling. I, yes. Yeah, can I, and I, I just want to just piggyback with what you said. Um, when you when you recognize that he wasn't in a place to listen to you so that you could be heard. I think what I was doing as far as referencing doing that internal work is I feel that when you get yourself to a place where you no longer need to be heard, um, you know, that you do that and you hear yourself and you acknowledge yourself, then you can still speak, but it comes from a different place. Right. Well, you don't need to maybe be heard by somebody else. You're hearing, you're, you're listening to yourself. Exactly. Which is a very good point. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Heidi? Yeah, I would like to add to this. I hope I got everything because I was a little bit distracted by the by the comment stream and not always listening 100%. But what I want to contribute is that uh, we have often created a sort of false belief that we are not listened to. And when we are inside of this false belief, we create situations where we really get the confirmation that we are listen, not listened to. For instance, when we, we're talking about in the couple, you know, when you have a very important thing, thing to say to your partner and you choose a moment where he is just somewhere else and, and cannot listen, and then he may even react in a not nice way, uh, then you get the confirmation, oh, nobody is listening to me and I'm, you know, I'm not listened to. So we have to be very careful about seeing what our own patterns are and how we create these experiences and then learn to choose the moments, the right moments to bring up what we want to say and not only the right moment but also the right way to say things. You know, not in a blaming way for instance, but whoever wants to be blamed and when we begin to blame nobody listens to us. So uh, choosing the right moment and choosing the right way to say what you want to say is crucial for being heard. Good point because so many people we've all been you know feel hurt, wounded, you know all of those things and we take each situation and it builds to the next one and then we make this assumption right just like she said that was a very good point. And that's why we're here opening up this entire concept about listening. Because what you ha it, all, all, it sounds mundane or easy, but all you have to do is take each experience as a, as a new one. Now, I mean, certainly you have experience and it builds from one to another. But to take the experience as a new one and to make peace with your baggage and listen. Listen step by step because it's going to, when you when you positively approach it, it's going to show us how things have changed from the past. And each new experience will show how powerful listening is and what you receive back from it. So that's a, those are really great points. And Heidi has a comment, so you want to put it up, Heidi? Yeah, I have many comments, but this is the one I pinned before. Candy said, be yourself and express just the way you are automatically they will start to listen to you, they will start hearing you. And then it's Steve Moore saying this, don't just listen to hear, 
listen to understand, which seems to me a very, a very important thing. Well, and, when, when you let me just comment about that. Okay. When you listen, you are that's hearing is not understanding. Hearing is just one dimension. When you listen, you are on the path of understanding. You may not understand everything because that's where we are in in our practice. We're going listening step by step. So that was a great point. And I want to say to Candy, absolutely. When you are being authentic, how can people? I mean, you have so much more to so much more opportunity for people to feel like they can connect with you. I, um, I have quotes that are on the uh, event page that I found were really very cool. And at some point, maybe we can read them. But when you feel somebody's heart, you listen. There's a, there's a magnetic attraction, and you listen. So go ahead, Heidi. What is that one? Yeah, this is Steve Moore. He says, hearing, this was a previous comment, hearing is reactive, listening is proactive, understanding glues them together. And then I had, oh dear, now it's gone. There was a lovely comment from um, Phil about opening the heart. It takes courage to listen with open a heart. I don't find it just now. It, skipped away there are too many comments <laughs> coming up <laughs> well it does it does take courage but when you when you land there you are completely taken care of and it might still there might be things about being cor courageous but when you go back to the heart you are not alone so and when so listening to the heart just puts you in a place of of power of a, this universal force. So when you find that, Heidi, you can bring it up again. So let's, um, I know Robin had posted something in the chat. Did you want to comment, Robin? Yes, um, I do. Oops. Yes, I'm unmuted now, right? Yeah. <laughs> this muting and unmuting. Um, it, it made me think um, of something that I've used in the past, and in particular, it's funny with my husband. Um, some of us are more visual, and that, and it's very important that listening from the heart. But I have found in the past that sometimes taking um, a common ground, a piece of paper, and starting to draw a little bit about what we're talking about, um, maybe in a graphic style or something, that works for us very, very well. And it takes away this he said, he said. Um, that little bit of resistance, and then you have it there visually. And some people actually can listen visually better than they can listen through auditory. Mm -hmm. So I just thought that was just a little bit of a different take on it. Yeah, everything gives off information. Mm -hmm. And listening, listening to the paper, listening to the instinct that you got to create that paper. Everything is right. everything is listening. So that's perfect listening. So when you're talking with somebody, making that eye contact is huge. Yes. Because you carve out that space of that it, there's an intensity when you listen with your eyes to someone. They feel it. They feel like they're being stared at. Mm -hmm. And you get their attention. So that, oh, Katrina's got a look on her. <laughs> get it, Katrina. What are you going to say? Well, it's it's funny that you say that because I've always just been very natural at making eye contact that sometimes I didn't realize that that's for me like, okay, you're engaging. But just because the other person isn't looking you in the eye doesn't mean that they aren't necessarily listening and they're just not necess maybe not comfortable with interacting in that way. They need to kind of get more used to that. Mm -hmm. So if you could kind of stick with it and sort of let them know like, hey, this is how I show up. There's nothing to be you know, uncomfortable about, I think that, that goes a long way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I have been told that before, like, yeah, you have sort of that, that presence when you're, when you're with a person, you're looking right at them, it's because that's, that's how I'm truly listening to them. That's, that's how I approach things. So I think that understanding and communicating that is very important. And I wanted to add one more small thing to all the great things that everyone's been saying is that being grateful and showing and expressing that gratitude also goes a long way. So if someone's taken their time to spend with me and listen or to share their heart or even if it's just in a, a general interaction, I'm always 
very mindful to say thank you because that's I mean that's what I'm feeling in my heart. I'm very I feel very grateful that they have taken that time to spend with me, to listen to me, to help me, whatever that is. And I think that really helps open up that listening conversation too. Like they feel heard, they feel acknowledged, and who doesn't want to be acknowledged to be, hey, thank you for spending time with me or listening. That's that's very important in many ways that I think when we're busy, we forget. So I, I think that goes a long way as well. It does. And, I, you know, something just was really funny that just happened with Katrina because I see the film strip in a certain way. And I like to go with how I see it one by one so that while I'm engaged in this conversation, I'm, I'm listening, but I don't forget who hasn't spoken yet because I go one by one. Well, and, and if you all have done Hangouts before, you know that when you speak your 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 picture is on is in the on the big screen and if you're not speaking it's on the bottom so i don't know if katrina was had meant to say something in that second but she flashed up and all i saw were her eyes that was before she said anything now she wasn't speaking robin was speaking but she flashed and this happens if you watch this show you see these things happen and it was really amazing because she was like, her eyes were as full and it interrupted me in a way that was a good interruption. But it, it grabbed my attention. She got heard and she didn't even realize what, you didn't realize what happened, did you? Yeah. Yeah, no, I did not. I didn't realize that. But I do feel that for me, that's a large part of how I communicate with people. Yeah. So when you, when, with this show, you know, it's, it's so extraordinary how what we are expressing plays out. You know, so, you know, what we share verbally or what everybody's heads are doing or smiling or all those things ends up playing out in some kind of action with mm -hmm. us, right? Doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That's what makes it so cool. Yeah, every time. So for those of you that are listening, you know, through the comment stream, just listen with your eyes as well to the, the universal messages that come through because that's really important. And I see Heidi has another comment. Yeah, finally from Phil, uh, eye contact leads to heart contact. Ah, it sure does. That's important. Marilyn, yes, can I go, jump in? Yeah, go ahead. Because exactly what you described just happened with me that like the universal come and show you, give you an example of what you just described. When you just described what happened with you and Katrina, how her eyes just lit up, what I was thinking in my mind and what I was feeling like I need, wanted to express the next time that you, uh, you know, I was able to have a chance to speak was this. It was, and what it was is that when you know who you are or you have a, a deep sense of self and what you need, what you say or how you convey that will change the other person who is listening. And that's exactly what happened with Katrina. It was like she just, and I know from what I know of Katrina, it's like she just has this sense of who she is and what she needs to say, what she wants to say and what she wants to share. And that's what happened. I mean, her eyes, it was like she didn't even say a word, but her eyes changed you because, I mean, it, it's that powerful. It's like it really just expressed the, it proved the very thing that I want to say, that when you know who you are and you act on that, come from that place, you will change that person who is listening to you. And maybe that person will reject you and run away because they can't handle it. I mean, the opposite of what happened with you. But you will change that person. You will be heard when you speak coming from a place of knowing, you know, a deep sense of self and what you need. Did you, did you see her pop up on the screen, Gail? Her eyes? Yeah. No, no, okay. but I was okay. just in awe of how what I was thinking was being played out right before me, which oh, is interesting because okay. the last, didn't that happen, remember a couple of weeks oh, ago yeah. my son came in when we yeah. were talking, it's like, this happens all the time to me. It's just like, yeah. there it is, the universe yeah. just yeah. like, Playing, you know, at play. Playing with us. Yes. Right. Did anybody see her but me? Anybody see her flash up? Nobody? 
Oh my goodness gracious! I need a drink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know this this notion of being heard, or what somebody takes in from us, is not up to us. We have, I mean, we hope for the best. We hope for planting a seed. We hope for a connection, love, you know, whatever. But it's not up to us how much of what we say they they can hear. So we just do our best. Jeremy. Do this. Okay. Um, I guess. Uh, well, some of this I'm going to save for the end, I think. But, okay. Okay. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, so one thing I would mention, you know, some of us have uh, different temperaments, and if you express yourself too strongly, uh, you're not going to be heard. And so I wanted to bring that up as kind of a uh, counterexample, and um, I'll give you a story about that at the end, but I okay. don't think it's appropriate to okay. share it. Now, okay. but I, I just I'm one of those fiery individuals, and so I have to keep my temper in a little bit of a leash. But uh, I'll tell you a story about that at the end. Okay, okay. you know, you, I, I, and Jeremy will do that. The point is, when you li listening to yourself, listening to the intentions, as we said, listening to yourself, getting clear about who you are. You know is very important because that when you listen that it, it you should be listening to what's going on in the dynamics between people if we can not should but could or maybe will so when you hear yourself showing up too much when you hear yourself being too loud or overpowering or you hear the other person squirming in their seat you're standing up in front of a room of people doing a presentation, speaking. Many of us are in business. We stand up in front of a room, listening to where people are in their seats, paying that close attention to being heard is going to tell you something. You know, um, if, you, when you, if you start a presentation with a joke or a stat of some sort or a story, you know, listening to the, how people are receiving it. Where do you go from there? You didn't plan how they were going to respond. You're hoping you tell a joke, everybody laughs, right? But there can be one person or two people in the audience that may not get it. What do you do from there? You listen to the response you're getting so that you know how to respond. So listening to yourself is so crucial when you're engaging in a conversation of any kind, whether it's in a film strip, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's over the phone, whether it's in an auditorium full of people who come to listen to you, it's extremely important. And um, I want to get to that comment, but I want Marguerite, because you started and you've been quiet, and I, I, I don't like it when you're quiet. So I, I wanted to say this, and, and it was Robin who said visual things, right? So I did a little drawing here. So when we have an intention here inside, we don't say anything, but we shoot energy yeah. out. And I could, I, I saw it on you when you mentioned it, it was like a pop of energy, right? Yeah. And then the other person over here, I don't know if you could see it, can pick it up with uh, their inner empathic capability, let's say. Uh, like um, Katrina is an empath, right? Yes. And and we most of most of us are empaths. We can we can feel it, even though we don't say it. So then, if if this intention here matches here, like if you see these two circles, there is a matching area of interest. There is an opening on here to be heard from the other person. And if, if both of those people here have, have a channel open, then they can listen to when you have an intention. So if that person here has an opening, uh, can be listening, uh, seeing this, then they can respond. 
And that's the first impulse before we even have an interaction. And then there can be a, a being heard when these two people are listening to each other. Is that complicated or? Did, well, I think no, I don't sense. think so. I think it describes some of what we talked about in, uh, in weeks past about the flow. Even you know when you listen, you know what what we talk about here, and how the energy of what we share here, combined with all of us, can in this conversation of listening and regardless of what we were talking about, but we can impact the world. That other circle can be out of Mongolia, and they will be impacted by what we create here, what we all come together to do. They will feel the energy. For sure. There, there is like, when we're listening on that channel, because we have many different channels, and I work with healing, so I'm listening to channels, other channels than the voice, let's say. It could be visual, it could be body language, it could be you know, that emotional energy, it could be mental energy, it can be foreign energy, whatever. Uh, so when you work with healing, you have to tune into that. And then what we do, we are attuning, which is listening, right? Right. So. Right. And, and then what you do with the information, you have to listen to. You know, you, you're, you, you're hearing someone. Or you get, receive information, you receive this co connection. Listening to decide how you handle it, what you do, is important to be heard again. Yeah. So, so when that happens, then there is a connection, and then you establish that channel. Same as on Google Plus. Here, we we plus each other, and that's the first contact, and then we develop it. So right. it's the same everywhere. everywhere. Thank you. Yes, everywhere. So Heidi, what do you got? Yeah, I have a couple of comments here. The one is Candy. She said, listening is often the only thing needed to help someone. I think she's really, really right with that. Yeah. Then a couple of comments here from Phil. To talk without fear, to listen without judgment. Try it for the next 24 hours. Oh, he had another comment before. I want to bring that up too. So. He said, eye contact can mean having the courage to listen without judgment. Some people have issues with eye contact because they feel mm -hmm. they might be judged. And from here, this his recommendation to d try it for 24 hours. Uh, can you put up the f candies first? Back yes. Up? Mm -hmm. So listening is... It's often the only thing needed to help someone. So I would, I would, I would say it's the only, It really is the thing, because when you listen, it's the container for, for whatever else you listen. It's listening. It's not agreeing. It's not one thing. It's everything. It is the connection to the to the spiritual out spirituality, the energy to everything, of what to do for that person, how to handle things, what to give them, what message is coming through you. It is everything. So it is the, that's why we spend so much time doing this. But that, that's, a, that's very important. And absolutely with Phil, when you listen, there is no judgment. This, I mean, as you listen, your listening gets deeper and deeper to a place where there is no judgment. That's so important. Thank you both very, very much. It, was there one other one there, Heidi? No, not yet in the comment, but here uh, Candy says, we have two ears, one mouth, so we should listen more than we say. <laughs> oh, here oh, it is. Yes. Now it came, it came through, so I can bring it also up here. Here it is. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, and I know Jeremy has a story, so I want him to share his story. And then uh, before we go to Jeremy, anybody have any other comment or anything that you um, you have based on what you've heard or based on what you're now receiving? Anybody? That, Jeremy? Jamie, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, it's just amazing following this conversation. Um, and it, it, it's 
I, so far we've seen how there are lots, there are kind of a few different elements which help you to be heard. Um, and as a lot of people have been mentioning in the comments, um, the the body language is very important. The eye contact um, and it engaging with listening and understanding to people. These things are really important. All these elements come together that, that get your voice and your message heard. Um, and I was just thinking, something came to me when you mentioned to Marilyn about um, your husband, um, that he wasn't listening at one moment when you were talking. Uh, and it just reminded me of something that happened to me recently. I, I was out with a friend um, and she was on her mobile phone chatting and stuff while I was talking and I sort of felt that I wasn't being heard in that moment. And, and it just made me realize that um, when I think back to other experiences in my life of when I was being heard, I realized that in those moments, those were moments when I was truly in line with myself, sort of within, like totally content with who I am. And this is very much what I think um, Gail was saying this also, that when you're really centered and content with who you are, what you stand for, what 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 message you have, and you are totally in that present moment, you, you automatically generate a, a magnetic presence that people can't ignore. So when you find yourself being ignored by somebody chatting on their mobile phone, it's probably because you've just slipped out of alignment with your true presence. Um. And when you just come back into that present moment, it's because you're, you're not seeking any attention from anyone. You're not seeking to get any kind of recognition. You're just happy being present with yourself and, and the, the kind of energy you tap into that divine spiritual presence that you have within yourself. And once you come into that, this kind of this energy, this power projects outwards and it's like a magnetic presence that immediately catches people's attention. And, and I found that that happened to me when when I was talking, well, first of all, listening to the other person so that you understand where they are and, and you start to resonate on the same vibration and wavelengths as them, and then you start relating to them uh, true experiences from yourself. So you're not being false. You're not trying to kind of you're not trying to help somebody by just kind of making stuff up. You're just relating to them true stories from your own experience because that's what you've been through, that's what you know, and that's who you are. And when you relate to your the own reality of your own experience, that generates this this kind of power and people pick up on that. So I, I was I was just gonna say that all you need to do, as as we've all been saying today, you just need to listen to yourself and tune into that presence that you have within yourself. And then automatically you'll get the body language, automatically you'll get the eye contact, automatically you'll express exactly what the person needs to hear. It's just a question of tuning into yourself and that presence that, that you project outward that becomes this magnetic um, attraction to people. Uh, yeah, you're right. And that in the patience and the forgiveness and all those other words that come with things, to listen for those and your, and your experiences, they're all magnificent and you need them we need our experiences to help us, you know, in our presence and going forward. So I want Jane, uh, Jer thank you, Jamie. Jeremy, can you give us your story in like a minute or so? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I was uh, talking to my parents on the phone last night, and my dad was trying to give me some uh, unsolicited fatherly advice, and uh, I, I just, I got defensive. I came unglued. You know, suddenly I'm raising my voice with him on the phone. I have no idea, you know, I mean, part of it is we as lawyers are trained to interrupt, you know, trained to cross-examine everybody. And I, I uh, couldn't believe that I did that. And we just, finally my dad said, you're not listening to me. You know, can I talk now? And I, I just, you know, I started thinking about this converse, conversation we were going to have today and that I realized you know, the problem was with me, and so today we were both apologizing to each other, and, you know, um, I, but I ran across a, a Lebanese proverb this morning that connected with me with this, and it is, uh, lower your voice and strengthen your argument. And I think that's true with our interactions. If, if, we, if we settle down and stop shouting and yelling at each other, 
I, I think we'd have a lot better uh, communication. So um, I don't know. That, that's something I'm going to try today. Wow. Jeremy, you, you posted that. I don't know what time it was because I was up really late <laughs> running last night, but I saw that post, right? Didn't you post that? And now I know why. Yes, that, that's why. <laughs> what, what time was that? <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah. That's great. I, I See, this is what I love about this, is that these things happen every time we do this show, you know, and it happens for me. Before I do the show, I'm cognizant of what we're going to do, and I things start shifting for me. Hi, uh, Heidi, you have something? Yes, I have a comment from Dorothy, and she says, "Be interested, not interesting." It's a great reminder to listen. Yes, thank you, Dorothy. So here's one that I posted, which I think is really nice, and I'd like to say it before we. Uh, uh, continue. I swear the best thing is listening to someone's heartbeat and knowing it's beating like that just because of you. And when you've given people a chance to be heard, you will hear their heartbeat. So I love how this conversation has been. We have an interesting one going to come up for next week, but I want each of you to be able to share so our audience knows who you are. So let's go down the line. Heidi. Who I am. I'm Heidi. I'm living in Italy. I'm a transformational coach and a voice coach and a singer and a hangout host. And I have this show, The Wisdom Factory, with my husband, Mark, where we promote a little bit cutting edge uh, philosophy, uh, integral uh, worldview. And then I have the show with Margarita Connections Forum right before our show here. That's, Thank you. I think, all. Cool. And Darlene? Hi, I'm Darlene, and I live in Western North Carolina in the mountains. And I'm a mom, a grandmom, and a body relationship mentor and uh, vibration coach. And I just really get a kick and love supporting women uh, raise their vibration, create harmony in their bodies, and just live the most radiant life that they can. And I absolutely adore meaningful conversations like this and shifting consciousness and being part of a new paradigm on this earth. And, yeah, I'm just thrilled to be here. Thank you. And Gail? Hi. Let's see. I am Gail Harris, and I'm um, a writer and an author and a mother. And I've written two books. One is a self-help book and one is a memoir, and they both are about listening in very different ways. And it's Thank great you. to participate today. Cool. Thank you. And Jamie? Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm Jamie. I'm a spiritual life coach. Um, I have a background in multi-faith spirituality and psychology, and I, I use the two things together in combination to help uh, people discover and explore their own unique brand of spirituality and how it can help them in overcoming the sort of general common challenges of life. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Jamie, uh, Jeremy. Um, I am a, a father, husband, um, musician, attorney, <coughs> writer, um, haven't written, written any books yet, but for any of you that have written books in the panel, I'm going to add your books to my Goodreads list so I can read more books this year. Um, I guess, uh, well, I'm also unemployed right now, so I'm trying to figure out which direction to go with my career. Um, that, that pretty much sums it up. Cool. Well, that's a big, that's a, that's a lot. That's a good thing. That's a good a lot. Katrina? Hi there, I'm Katrina, and I am a creativity coach, a writer, and an intuitive. I also write about helping people get through creative blocks in all areas of their life, and I blog twice a week. My URL is in my lower third, creativekatrina.com. Mondays and Thursdays, you can catch new posts. And she writes really well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Marguerite? So I am a healer. Um, intuitive life and business mentor for 
uh, therapists who are into the healing field, especially women. And um, yeah, I'm also an author. I published a print book actually a couple of years ago uh, about crystal healing and crystals. And I'm an uh, love art, and I hope that I am a good friend too. <laughs> You're so cute. And Robin? Hello, um, I'm Robin Thomas, and my background is in science, but right now what I'm really loving to do, I have a new uh, website where it's called livingwellconnections.info, and I also have a group, a community on Google Plus with that. And what I want there is just all aspects of health. I love contributors um, and bring into spiritual health, social health, physical health, so that's something that I'm excited about right now. Cool. And um, I am a business life coach and do several things um, that come from that, but everything I do is all connected. So I also have, have created this manifesto. It's called the Listening Manifesto. It's like a declaration of independence, like a proclamation. And it has all kinds of listening things in it. And I am would love to give it to you. So if you just send me an email to um, Marilyn at MarilynShannon.com, I will be happy to uh, send it to you. So I thank everybody for being here. Does anybody have, like, a word, not not a long sentence, a word, two words that sum up today. Does anybody have one that they would like to? Who's who's got it? Marguerite, you have your hand up. Go. Be heard today. And then come back next week and let us know how you were heard and what you discovered in that space. So with that, thank you all very very much for being here. Everybody that's been listening on the stream commenting, sharing this time with us. We look forward to seeing you next week. Thank our beautiful panel and our regulars and our new regulars. Thank you very much for being here and all of our friends and loved ones. We will see you soon in Skywire. Bye. <laughs>